what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about scream 7 in this video here today we're going to be going over this recent report that came out from daniel rpk now this bit of information backs up a lot of speculation that has been going around regarding what we found out when nev campbell had announced her return and once we start finding out that it was going to be focusing on sydney's kids and everything and it also corroborates a bit of information i said back in march in a video in which i was told that if seven is successful we might be getting a new sydney prescott trilogy and that's what seven is intending to start now according to daniel rpk he is corroborating that because in his recent bit of information today he says that scream seven will have a big time jump for them to have sydney's kids play a role also at least part of the movie will be set in a new town it doesn't say where now when he's referring to it doesn't say he's referring to a casting grid or some type of actor's grid that he's looking at that has information about the movie the grid also mentions that this is the first chapter in a new planned trilogy now from my experience with this grid i'm only familiar with a grid uh that's showcased via breakdown services those of you familiar with breakdown services if you know you know i'm not familiar with any other casting grids i'm sure others exist but i don't see anything on breakdown services for scream 7 i might be looking at an outdated site however when it comes to this time jump that's fine and dandy i guess but that does propose the question of what about how old gail and sydney are going to be i mean without knowing how big of a time jump it is I'm not saying that it's really going to be that big of a big of a factor in the long run. I just don't want a Frank situation purge two to purge three. If you re remember purge two to purge three, I think had a very massive time jump, maybe over a decade at least. And he looked just as old as he did in the second one, because casting wise, it didn't it didn't line up with the time jump. I just hope the time jump we get isn't so dramatic that it doesn't line up with how nev campbell herself looks because nev campbell doesn't look very old nev campbell still looks quite youthful still looks very lovely and i don't want them to say oh well this is set you know 20 some years later or this is at 12 years later or however many years later something dramatic and nev herself doesn't look 12 or 20 years older i'm not saying they're gonna do that but you know i just don't want them to go down a path like that like you saw between the purge 2 and the purge 3 if you know what i'm talking about from that movie and that time jump that happened between 2 and 3 then you know but in respect to sydney's kids i get it that would corroborate also this mentality that her kids are in fact very young uh i was someone of the mentality that we never actually saw how young these children were she just made mention of the fact that she was taking them to school so we never actually saw how young they were. I also was speculating that, you know, a lot of people in the States in general, I have heard will just use school tossed around even when they're not even actually taking their kids to school. They might be taking them to daycare or something. I've seen a few people just throw school around so loosely. And a lot of people, of course, will take school very literally and assume that, well, these kids sound like they're either in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. So maybe we're going to be seeing some high schoolers. But that does raise the question of what about this rumored babysitter? Because if the rumored babysitter is also the 20 something year olds and her group of friends that are being cast in the film, how old are these kids of Sydney's going to actually be? So that's why I don't think we're going to have a significant time jump. We might at best have a time jump of seeing six year olds turned into nine year olds. And at that point, I can understand why you would still have a nine-year-old babysat. I wasn't babysat when I was nine. <laughs> probably should have been. I wasn't. A uh, few of you probably weren't either. But I can see them probably just not doing anything dramatic. I don't think these kids are going to be in high school when it comes to this time jump. At max, I could see us doing a five-year time jump at, at best. Maybe a little less. Maybe three three-year time jump. Three-year time jump sounds safe. Just for the sake of these kids being young. Keep them young. Three years sounds like a safe bet. Now, when it comes to the new trilogy, I, again, am not someone, and I know a lot of you out there are the same way. You are fans of the IP just like me. You are not necessarily all that hyped for a new Sydney trilogy. You were hyped to see Sydney's story concluding Scream 7. I think that's a fair assessment for me to make. I've seen several of you comment saying you are excited for Sydney to be back in Scream 7. But I'm curious if those of you who are excited about it 
now knowing that you could potentially be seeing them stretch this out even further into an eight and nine with Sydney still around, are you excited about it still? Because it begs the question, when is enough enough? Like I said before, I hope all of us can agree with this as people who have watched this franchise time and time and again and should be able to understand that there is a clear intent with this character and that she is destined to have peace, some type of calm in her life and live happily ever after. I think that's what she deserves. The creator himself, Kevin Williamson, thinks she deserved that as well. When do we give that to her, though? When do we give that to her? Some people would argue, oh, do it when you don't want to make screen movies anymore. Yes, but we also already know, I actually just put this out on the community page. The producers have already let us know they intend to milk Ghostface for as long as it remains profitable. So at some point, enough is enough. You need to be able to close the door on Sydney, Sam, Tara, Gale. It isn't just a Sydney thing. You need to not be exhausting characters like Sam, Chad, Mindy, all of them. It isn't just a trio thing. This applies to the core four too. Scream has to be able to reinvent itself in ways that will continue to appeal to newer generations if this is what you intend to do with it which is milk it a lot of us myself included would prefer you just in the franchise but again living in reality if this franchise remains profitable you're gonna keep getting screen movie after screen movie after screen movie now uh, the prospect of a new sydney trilogy doesn't mean that it's ultimately gonna be bad just because there might be disinterest of from me and a few others but that also doesn't mean that it's going to be good because it is in fact the same writer who I know a lot of people were complaining about with not complaining, I'll say, but taking issue with when it came to the writing of five and six. Granted, I know one half of them who people would argue was worse. James Vanderbilt, he's not writing Scream 7. Guy Busick, I've seen argued to be the stronger one of the two, but Guy is still responsible for five, just like James was responsible for five. And if you took issue with the writing of five and six, are you really that confident that seven's going to be better just because Sydney's back? Or is it the fact that Nev might be supervising the screenplay and that Kevin might be supervising the screenplay, which will result in Guy writing a better script than what five and six were? Just something to consider. Um, the prospect of Scream 7, 8, 9, again, doesn't really resonate with me. What would resonate with me is finding out that there is a end game in mind for the character of Sydney Prescott. They intend to ride out in a on a happy note. But right now, I don't get that vibe. I get a vibe of we're going to keep milking Sydney for the foreseeable future. And if that's what it is, that's just what it is. That, again, does not mean that there's going to be bad outings. I'm sure Nev Campbell will rise to the occasion because Nev Campbell is a tremendous actress. I just think that it's time to close the chapter on Sydney Prescott. I think it's time to branch out and do new things. It didn't work with Sam and Tara, according to some people. And if it didn't work with them, to me, that does not mean it's time to revert back to the old. It's time for you to find some competent writers, find some competent creatives who can write up new characters that will appeal to not only the old fans, but the new fans. Create something that we all can get on, on agreement with and let them let them let those characters carry your franchise. And I guess another thing to consider is that there are indeed fans that are just tired of Sydney Prescott. They're tired of her. The fact that people don't want to acknowledge those fans just goes to show you the fact of how we don't care to have nuanced conversations. My fandom with Sydney Prescott is related to I think the character deserves peace. However, there are some people who flat out are just tired of her and to dismiss either side is just as ignorant as if the Hollywood people behind this do that. It's not wise to just ignore your consumer base. If Seven were to somehow unfortunately underperform, you could argue that's an indication of the fact that they are indeed growing tired of the same song and dance. These requels, reboots, sequels, remakes. If Seven were to underperform, it would only harken back to this argument that you probably should have continued to try to breathe new life into the IP. The only thing that probably should have stuck around was Ghostface while you continued to reinvent the wheel. You're not really reinventing the wheel or really putting your best foot forward to keep Ghostface around forever when Ghostface is still chasing the same lady time and time and again. The fact that some people just don't want to accept that others are tired of Sidney Prescott is quite baffling to me. It's not a matter for me of being tired of her. It's a matter of thinking that the character deserves peace. But there are others, and I'd love for you to chime in down below. Let yourself be heard. I know some of you are just tired of Sydney. You are, in fact, open to seeing characters that aren't even Sam Carpenter. You just want to see new characters that have nothing to do with what happened in 1 through 6. Those fans do exist. That doesn't make them not fans of Scream. 
But again, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.